today we're going to be setting out this primitive style fish trap back here in this marsh in an attempt to catch some aquatic creatures back there. Now this thing is a monster of a bill. Check it out. Five foot long. It's all made out of primitive materials. The spars here are cane. The cordage is made out of yucca and it took quite a few hours to build this. At the very end of the video we'll show you uh, some of the steps, speed it up, kind of the time lapse of what it took to put this thing together. Now there are definitely better methods of building a trap this way. I would suggest kind of a basket weaving, but this is an option. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, walk back here, set it in. Understand it's made out of wood. We'll have to weight it down a little bit. I've already put a little bit of attractant, some bait inside. Use whatever works for the fish that you have. But uh, single entrance, good cone. Our max fish size should be about four and a half inches. That's what uh, it narrows down to there in the very back. But uh, Wish it luck. Time to go. Let's go, Huck. So I realize this seems like a bit of a stretch walking through this marsh and this bog. Especially with all this duckweed on the top. It looks like an alligator is going to jump up and grab us at any point. Whenever you're setting out a trap like this, in a primitive or in a survival situation, the idea is that you go to where the fish are. And I've got a sweet spot right through these trees, so uh, trek on. All right, well, this is the place I've chosen to set this fish trap. Notice it's an open area. Before we got over the weeds, you could hear some splashing, a little bit of movement. So hopefully, with a little bit of luck, we'll catch some fish or uh, whatever's in here. Now the bait's already inside. We've spaced four rocks uh, uniformly all the way down the uh, length of this trap. And the idea is that as it takes on water, it'll sink down evenly all the way to the bottom. Now if this was in running water, I would definitely tie it off or put some rocks on top of it. In this instance, it's enclosed. The only issue I would really have is maybe a turtle coming in or a croc and ripping apart the trap and destroying all the work that's gone into it. But barring that, it ought to work pretty well. To give it a little bit of help, you might have to put a few more rocks in it. After that, just leave it alone. Because uh, two or three hours, we'll come back and check. Every two or three hours, you don't want to run out of bait. And with traps that only have a single opening, know that uh, sometimes the fish can find their way out. So check it often, but give it time to do its work. Wish you luck. Down you go. Let's go home, bud. Lead off. So it's been a bit of a rainy day. It hasn't dried off much, but there it is. Blood to the pot. Trap is sunken down pretty well. Everything settled pretty well. Pull it up. There we go. They're splashing. There's the funnel entrance right there. There's something moving in and around. Let's go ahead and pull this back to land and find out what we caught. All right, so this will have to do. Our access hatch is actually just uh, bent pieces of broken cane. Works pretty well for being able to get in there and move around. Before I throw my hands in here, I kind of want to know what I'm looking at, I see some patterns. Yep, and the scales. That's a Phoclostomus. If you've seen some of my other fish trap videos, you know that these are becoming a huge issue here in Texas. Uh, notably for this area, as of this year, I've never come into contact with them before. So that actually cannot return to the water. I'm putting it back in the trap. Uh, you're supposed to terminate those 
as you contact them, unfortunately. Okay, let's see what else we got. That's a rock, that's a rock. Slide everything. Let's see. I felt like there was a lot more splashing around there. Let's go ahead and pull out the rocks. The larger placotomist in here, placostomist rather. So there you go. A little bigger. Put the bait bag down here. Look down and through. I think we've got the top. This thing does have narrowing edges. So. Some pretty good gaps in here as well. Yeah. Check a little bit more. Oh, that's a different texture. So I've got a fish in here. It's slimy, scaly, mostly slimy, like a bass. A little bigger round than a bass. Oh! Whoa. Freshwater drum? No. That's a carp, guys. So that's a bit unexpected. They get in there every once in a while. There's your carp. You can stay there, bud. Get out of it. Let's see what else we got. Pleco, pleco. Something smooth down here. Catfish smooth. Let's see if I can't grab him without getting spiked. The little bitty guy. Usually have a flathead. Channel cat here. And there's your channel cat. Alright, channel catfish. Doing alright. Well, he doesn't look like he's doing alright. A little bit more water for pulling him around. With everything else, kind of feels like. Nope, something else. Perch. Sun perch. Awesome, awesome. Let's see if he'll actually survive as well. Now, these fish traps, they continue to work for you. So instead of having to bait up fish hooks continuously or be there, you can set them out. That's the idea. You can continue to trap with them. Now again, this is not the most efficient model by far. It's a uh, rather labor intensive to put it together. I definitely recommend using a woven pattern uh, at all times. Guys, go ahead and uh, watch the rest of the video. We'll show you kind of the uh, building process sped up so you don't have to sit through hours and hours worth of uh, prep time. Like and subscribe, and as always, till next time. A little perch. Start to breathe. And catfish. Got him. All right. So this right here. This is what I was afraid of tearing up this trap. This is a red-eared slider, invasive to uh, most of the world, but native down here. Keep your nose away, pup. Now, this is a full-grown, probably going to be a female. Uh, we eat these at times because uh, they're so plentiful and they do so well out here. But uh, this one's this one's lucky. He can go back to the duckweed or whatever he was doing. But pretty cool turtle. Out. Open wide, bud. Alright, back to the water you go. Pretty easy to catch whenever it's shallow like this because you can see them moving. Come on. There he goes. Whew. He was never there. Let's go, pup. It's been a day. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a portable primitive fish trap. As you can see around me, there are quite a few materials that are going to go into this build, and they do take time to collect. Now, as we go over the parts and pieces, there's very few of them. Understand that you can substitute materials. Uh, there are always analogs no matter where you are. Just use the natural resources that you have in your area. Now, as far as our main structure, 
This is going to be made out of cane. And cane is North America's bamboo. So very renewable all over the place. And I'll show you how that goes together in just a moment. Now as far as the framework, we're going to be using mesquite. And we have bent them into hoops. That'll make sense once the trap starts to come together. And as far as our cordage is concerned, it's mostly yucca. This does take time to make. I've got videos over that. But uh, that's it. And after this, it's just a lot of time. So we're going to go ahead and speed up the build. We'll talk about what went into it and some of the design features of the trap at the very end. And then we'll set it out and see what we catch. So let's get started. There's the beginning. This is day two of the build. Now day one, we went ahead and put together the frame of the trap for the most part. And before we left this thing to settle overnight, we set it up vertically, as you can see, and these stays are put all the way around it. And they're not actually attached, they're just to make sure that the trap doesn't fall over. And we do this for a very important reason. These uh, pieces of cane may seem very light uh, individually, but put together they're quite heavy as they start to dry out. They're all very green, lots of water in them especially after the night's rain. And this is to make sure that the trap doesn't warp as it settles and cures. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is actually finishing 
the trap. I'm going to start out by enclosing this end, kind of putting a basket over. We'll leave a, a bit of an opening to make sure that we can get the fish or whatever we're trapping out of it. And then we'll flip it over and on the opposite end we'll have the funnel. And that's the trap entrance where uh, the creatures that we're going for will go inside. So go ahead and get started.
my guys that was a chore but here you have it this is your primitive fish trap now you might have to tighten a few knots add a little bit more lashing to it if you want to pretty it up a little bit got a nice good funnel entrance for real long just be able to keep those fish in there it's a gauge for some uh, small and medium sized fish and all we need to do right now is a few cosmetic things so it doesn't have to really look pretty it just has to work and we've got to go ahead and put uh, kind of a hatch there in the back so we can retrieve the fish that we catch presumably so tomorrow we chunk it out a little bit of bait and if all goes well we'll catch us a few fish